So I wanted to share something with you that has nothing to do with the featherweights or painting or anything else. So I recently have been looking for this machine because I had one and that one was in horrible shape. I tried to get it going. Um, I was successful for a while, but it had been so underwater and so full of rust that it just wasn't happening. So when I saw this one came became available, I decided to go for it. And I bet you're wondering what is under there. Do you like my free motion quilting, first of all? This is my first try at it. <laughs> anyway, so here she is. Yep. She's a Singer 99 dash. That means she was made here in the U.S., not in the U.K. If she was a 99K, it would have been that she was made in the um, U.K. Um, there's a lot of nice things about this machine. A lot. Um, there is an issue, however. And I'll explain that in a minute. So she's a quarter size machine, which means she's three quarters of a six Singer, um, the 66, which is her larger sister. And um, she's a heavy machine, heavier than a featherweight for sure. Probably a little bit lighter than a 66. I'm trying to get this tripod where it would be more helpful. So sorry. Yeah, she's leaning. Why she's leaning, I don't know. Anyway, does that help? She's a pretty machine. But here's the issue. When it arrived, I was all excited. And couldn't wait to try her out. Everything looks good and clean. Seriously. Good and clean. Wiring beautiful. Not an issue. Trying to put on more lights. I don't think we need the tea today. Um, I'm going to flip it down and come back and show you what's going on with her. So I'm back and this is as good as it gets as far as showing you what happened. I went to sew with the machine and I noticed the hook was not moving. And um, it wasn't picking up the bobbin thread. And that was suspicious, so I thought the clutch was loose. So I tightened the clutch, and it wasn't that at all. But you know what it was? If you could see in here, the rocker shaft is literally, well, it's better with my finger out of the way. It's cracked. And here's the piece I managed to get off of there. So this goes right there. So I thought about taking the other machine apart and taking the shaft out of that one. And then I thought about all the work that that entails because even though that one's kind of stripped down, this one's all put together. And except for that one thing, I have a feeling this is going to work. Everything's, everything's good. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful machine. So what I'm going to do is try to weld this. And some of you are probably going, never going to happen. Well, I had a situation a few years ago when I got a 127. And the carrier apparently dropped the machine because... By the time the box got to me, it was full of holes. And when I opened the machine, the entire the bed of the machine, you know, I'll zoom out and show you on this one, the whole bed of the machine was cracked in half. And the only thing holding it together were the these horizontal rods in here. <coughs> and she was a 127 with gorgeous decals. And I didn't want to lose that machine. Um, the intent was to start to restore machines and to sell them. 
but obviously I wasn't going to start with that one because I wouldn't sell it to anyone unbeknownst to them that it had been repaired, which if I would give it to someone, I would tell them it was repaired and how it was repaired. And that's been holding up for like three years. And I hand crank on that machine and I check it every so often and she's still working. So I'm going to try it with this. Why shouldn't it work? I mean, they use um, JB Weld on car parts and we get in them and trust our life with them. So I'm going to try it on this machine. Um, I'll let you know if I'm successful, obviously, if it works out. If it doesn't work out, huh, I'll let you know that too. And I'll let you know what steps I'm going to take next. So as far as um, contacting the previous owner about this, I did contact them and they were sincerely sorry. They said that the machine was working when they sent it. So this could be another case of it being abused in shipment. And um, this person was kind enough to refund me my money and told me it's okay if I keep the machine. So I thought that was pretty awesome. Um, I'll think twice about putting their name in here, but probably not for personal reasons. And I just thought it was awesome that it was, it was good to deal with them. It's good to deal with people that will stand behind what they're doing. So anyway, um, I'm going to get to it. I might film it um, just to give those of you out there an idea of how to use JB Weld I have used it before and um, then we will I will give it a few days let the machine rest and let that harden um, read the directions and see how long it takes to harden and then I'll run the machine and I'll show you what's going on okay so thanks so much for watching see you see you when I see you bye I know this isn't the best video in the world but I really wanted to try to show you what I'm, my plan is. So I put the bolt back in um, and the nut back on to hold that shaft in place underneath there. And then I put the broken part back on under here. And I lined up using the wheel, lined it up to see it in there. I don't know if I could get any closer to help you see. I lined everything up in here to where I want it to be. So I know my strategy that once I put the weld on there, I can put the weld on there, whichever strategy I'm going to use, put it on there, wrap it with an extra piece of weld, line it back up, link it up, and then this fit perfectly underneath here with my finger in the way it's not going to work this fit perfectly underneath here to hold it in place and that's my strategy so you're all on this journey with me we'll see what happens and see you when I see you remember this is um, a it's a 1955 Singer 99 dash made in the U.S. Everything else was running beautifully. Anyhow, see you when I see you. Thanks for watching. Bye.